Training the Prophetic Voice is a series of articles I've written on educational renaissance. Here in part three, we'll talk about schools of the prophets. In the Old Testament, there are many moments where we learn about the different schools that were in operation throughout ancient Israel. And the prophets themselves weren't just these lone figures who spoke prophecy in that ancient context. Instead, we have this understanding that to be a master prophet meant that you had a school of disciples, of people who were being mentored by you in a craft of speaking divine truth into society. And there are a couple of people that give us the sense that they are part of something bigger than themselves. They are part of one of these schools of the prophets. We begin with Samuel. From a very early age, almost his birth, he was devoted to the Lord by his mother, and he was sent to live in the house of Eli. Now, Eli was an interesting choice because Eli was not renowned as a great figure. His own sons had strayed from the Lord and had done corrupt things, particularly as it related to the temple service. Well, Samuel comes to live with Eli, and he practices with Eli the service in the temple. And there's this moment that is very telling. Samuel hears the voice of the Lord, and he assumes that it's Eli calling him. And so he goes to Eli, here I am, what do you need? And Eli says, I didn't call you, and he sends him back to bed. And later, Samuel hears the voice of the Lord again, and he goes to Eli once more, and Eli says, I didn't call you. And then we have this moment of training where Eli realizes that it's the Lord talking to you. The next time the Lord talks to you, respond to the Lord, and the Lord will give you a message. This is a moment of prophetic training helping Samuel listen to the voice of the Lord. So Samuel returns to his bed, he hears the Lord speak again, and he asks the Lord to speak. And in that moment, the Lord gives him a message. Now the message was not a great message because it was a message of condemnation on the house of Eli. And that's when we get our second moment of prophetic training in the house of Eli. In the morning, Eli says, did you hear the voice of the Lord? Samuel says, yes, I did hear the voice. And Eli says, whatever it is that the Lord spoke to you, you should proclaim that, no matter what the consequences are. And it's in that moment that Samuel then divulges to Eli the message of condemnation. So, reviewing, Samuel learns from Eli how to hear the voice of the Lord, and he also learns from Eli how to speak up. Once you've received that message from the Lord, it's your responsibility as a prophet to then speak that, no matter what the consequences are. We have another episode with Elisha. He uh, is seen by the prophet Elijah uh, tending to the cattle in the fields, and Elijah comes to him and sees him, and the Lord says, that is your new disciple. And so he asks Elisha to follow him, and he follows him immediately. We don't hear much of the nature of the relationship, but there are a number of episodes in the Elijah stories where we must assume that Elisha is right there with him. And one of the ways that we know that's the case is that there are several prophetic actions that Elisha carries out that are very much similar to those prophetic actions that Elijah accomplished, which gives us the impression that Elisha walked and talked and dined with Elijah for many years before Elisha went out on his own. The moment we'll focus on today is the moment when Elijah hands the baton over to Elisha. They go to the river, and uh, it says the sons of the prophets are with them. Uh, this phrase, the sons of the prophets, indicates that 
This is a prophetic school. These are disciples of the prophet Elijah. And now Elijah is going to separate from these sons of the prophet, take Elijah across the river with him. And in that moment, Elijah gives Elisha his cloak. And it's in that moment that the chariot comes down and takes Elijah away. And Elisha crosses the river to return to the sons of the prophet. Now he bears the cloak of Elijah. And the sons of the prophets accept him now as their new master prophet, the new head of school for this school of prophecy. So what do we learn from this story of Elisha? Well, in many respects, it has to do with the life-on-life -life impact that a teacher can have on a student. We see that in the story of Elijah as he cultivates a deep and rich relationship with Elisha, so much so that the actions that Elisha carry forth match very much those of Elijah, so much so that people see in Elisha his predecessor, Elijah. We also see the passing of the baton. One of the aspects we get to enjoy as teachers is that we are cultivating the next generation. We are the culture bearers handing the baton of culture on to a next generation. And our success in doing that stems from this life-on-life -life impact that we have. As we embody the truths that we are teaching our students, uh, they are better able to soak up and learn those truths, to become the kinds of people that will carry forth our cultural heritage because of the time we've spent with them. So what does it mean to train the prophetic voice then, in light of what we've learned about the prophetic schools in the Old Testament? Well, one, we should be mindful of our students as whole persons. We aren't just training their intellect, teaching them true things from the content of our history or math books. We are training them as whole persons and understanding them as moral and spiritual creatures. We all are whole persons with emotional, relational dynamics. And in this Old Testament school of the prophets tradition, we can see ways in which people are spiritual beings and that we as teachers can tend to this. This doesn't mean that we uh, make them into models of ourselves. We don't see this with Eli or Elijah, that they created carbon copies of themselves. They instead promoted the well-being of their students so that they could take on the mantle of responsibility to carry forth the work of the Lord, to speak into society, uh, the truths that they receive from the Lord. And that's our great hope as teachers, is that we could train up our students so that they can be highly receptive to the message from the Lord, and then also bear the burden of that responsibility to then speak that message from the Lord into culture. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this series on training the prophetic voice. And if you'd like to learn more, you can Learn more at our website, Educational Renaissance. And at Educational Renaissance, we are promoting a rebirth of ancient wisdom for the modern era. And today we've looked at the Old Testament. Hopefully that Old Testament idea will stimulate some of your thoughts on how you can hone your craft of teaching in your classroom today. Thank you.